Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Kemaford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out-engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. How to lead and empower your team through a crisis. According to Harvard Business Review's management tip of the day, and we'll have a link on the uh, show page, a leader sets the emotional tone in the example, both in good times and most importantly, in bad. I agree. As a leader, how do you help your team deal with and move through a time of crisis? And before we go any further, let's reframe the word crisis to change. That one step will help de-escalate the negative power of the word crisis. So here are five tips to help people navigate change scenarios. Number one, be present. Let people express their emotions. Make it safe for them to say what's really going on for them. Their voice matters. Number two, be connected. Since you're here for them, you're in this together, you'll move through it together. Everybody belongs together. Make sure everybody feels connected. Number three, explain meaning making. Once everyone understands the stories that they make about their experiences, then they can choose new ones. We are making meaning about what happens to us every day. How does that meaning make us feel? Empowered, disempowered, happy, sad, mad, scared, peaceful. Number four, choose a positive future. Talk about how everyone would like to feel once the grieving is over, once the pain is lessened. Get everybody looking forward. Number five, forge a path together. Then we'll know how to get where we want to go. See, our ability to navigate change is directly correlated to the meaning that we make about what happens to us. And the way that we make meaning is based on the stories that we tell ourselves about what happens to us. Now, the meaning that we make will determine whether our experience is positive or negative, right? Empowering or devastating. Example. Lots of things changing, lots of short notice clients and requests. Meaning making option number one, oh my God, this is so stressful. I'm emotionally exhausted by this. It's all too much. Results of this meaning is what? Missed deadlines, incomplete work, stress for self and those that have to deal with the missed deadlines or incomplete or low quality work. No fun for anyone and certainly no ease, grace or joy. Alternatively, Meaning making option number two, yippee. Change means movement and growth and a chance to really shine and pace myself. How great that we have so much work. I'm gonna fully show up. I'm gonna serve our awesome tribe. How great that I get to tap my own awesome brain to become even more clear, find even more solutions as I focus on the outcomes I want to create. Result of this meaning, empowerment choice of how to respond versus compulsively react. Ease, grace, joy, support of self and others, shining your light, honoring your company values, choosing your reality. Whatever is happening outside of us is still going to happen. The power that we have is choice. What meaning would you like to make? So let's make some good meaning. What helps us make that positive and empowering meaning? Well, to have that meaning in addition to our internal choices, we also want to use some external tools. So on the show page, you're going to see the four factors of sustainable smart tribes. So see a Venn diagram, if you will, with four circles. The top circle is behavior. The bottom circle is mission, vision, and values. The circle on the left, leadership effectiveness. The circle on the right, organizational effectiveness. When we have shared behaviors based on 
our mission vision values, which gives us leadership effectiveness and organizational effectiveness, we're all in sync. So let's dive into each one. Behavior. Our behavior depends primarily on beliefs and our sense of safety, belonging, and mattering plays a big part too. Now, behavior, it's also affected by whether we're in our critter state, fight, flight, freeze, or our smart state, empowerment, collaboration, clear thinking, peace. And it's also governed by our beliefs, our identity, our resources, and all of the other goodies on our particular map of the world. See, it's important to note that the nature of our behavior is really tuned, if you will, by who we are, the choices that we make, and realizing that behavior is predictable if we don't change the beliefs and identity that drive them. We need to constantly distinguish what is driving our behavior out of alignment in order to shift it back in to alignment. Leadership effectiveness. So desire is the first step toward leadership effectiveness. And that fantastic, intangible drive and passion for excellence, for being all that you can be, is what makes a remarkable leader. And there are five factors, what we call smart tribe accelerators, which will help you assess your leadership effectiveness when you interact with others. Oh, and on the show page, you're going to see a link to our uh, leadership excellence and leadership experience assessment. Number one, focus. The single most important practice in ensuring that you're leading effectively is focus, right? Number two, clarity. Being super clear means we need to take the time to discover what we need, to articulate it clearly, and to be sure that the other party understood our communication. Number three, accountability. Accountability starts at the top. This is where many companies struggle. If you're having accountability challenges anywhere in your organization or focus or leadership or culture challenges, get some executive coaching. Number four, influence. Real influence is about engaging, enrolling, empowering others. And sustainable results, number five, sustainability is about creating win-win agreements with ourselves and others. So let's look at organizational effectiveness for a sec. So first of all, if an organization is to be truly effective, it must at heart be a learning organization, a term that was coined by Peter Senge, and you'll see a link on our show page. A learning organization is a company that facilitates the ongoing education and development of its members and continuously transforms itself. A learning organization has five main features. Number one, systems thinking and understanding that all parts affect the whole and changes in any one part will likewise affect the whole. The best way to solve problems is to understand each problem in relation to the overall ecosystem and whole of the company. Number two, personal mastery. The commitment by the individuals at the company to the process of ongoing learning and development. Being excited about growing yourself. Number three, mental models. Willingness to challenge internal theories, norms, behaviors, values. Number four, shared vision. A shared vision motivates the team to learn as it creates a common identity that creates focus and energy for learning. The most successful visions build on the individual visions of the team members overall. Number five, team learning. Teams that share their learning processes together openly see problem solving and expand their problem-solving capacity and capability greatly. Open communicative cultures will help ongoing dialogue and keep that communication going, keep the discussion going faster. A smart tribe can only exist in a flexible culture where learning and communication are consistent. Let's take just one second to talk about mission, vision, values. So too often we walk into a company and find a wordy mission statement moldering on the wall. And when the mission, vision, and values are stale, or not really what people are living at the company, or aren't aligned to, or aren't communicated in an enticing way, 
it doesn't activate the reward network in the brain. It actually activates the pain network in the brain and people feel a lack of belonging. They feel low social status in comparison with others who work with other organizations that feel alive and aligned. They may feel betrayed if there's a conflict between what they signed up for and the values that people are actually living. Now, flat or misaligned mission and vision and values don't just fail to inspire, they hurt people. And this becomes extremely apparent when there's a crisis, right? If the individuals aren't compelled and vested in the mission of the company, when the crisis occurs, boom, they won't feel compelled to push through. So it's essential that our team lives our company's mission, vision, values, which means leadership must model them reinforce them constantly, help us understand them, help us understand why they matter, help us see how we're part of something bigger. And if the behaviors of an organization's leaders are not aligned with the, our values, you'll see anger and resentment and then apathy, ultimately. We find some people may not be able to become profoundly aligned with other people, but they can and will become profoundly aligned with a potent mission, vision, and values. We all crave being something, ache to be some part of something bigger. So crises aren't always inevitable, you know? Leaders must empower their teams to push through each crisis. And this empowerment is based on trust. If the team trusts you as their leader, you have been provided the tools and you've given them the tools, they trust themselves to push through, the crisis won't be crippling. How are you empowering your team to move through times of crisis? Thank you for joining me today. You'll see all sorts of great resources on the show page. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there and please tell your friends.